Vikings were off this week, so they got a nice, nice buy. The Cowboys, 24-6 over the Lions. Dak was back. He thought he looked okay. There was nothing special. I thought they did a good job of kind of keeping him not doing a whole lot. I think a lot of a lot of it was just trying to get him back in, back into the swing, back into the rhythm of things. He managed the game well, 19 to 25, 207 at a touchdown at the end. Pollard, they had a solid run game. Pollard, 12 carries, 83 yards. Zeke, 15 carries, 57 yards, two touchdowns. They moved the ball well, but the story of the game was the defense again. Five turnovers in the second half. They scored <clears throat> touchdowns on three of the f- three, three of the four. One was the was the one that they didn't was on the right up where they the Lions fumbled on the goal line and Dallas was able to still get a couple of first downs just to get out of the shadow of their own end zone and then the other, the fifth turnover was ending the game with a kneel down so 21 points off of turnovers really just another dominating performance and the game changed on the on that fumble right at the one which was Micah Parsons had a hustle play, which when you see your best player doing that, that riles up your bet, your own team, where it was a screen pass to Brock Wright. It looked like he was going to score. He was down at the one. The Lions did not challenge it. But you, if you watch that play back, you can see Micah Parsons sprinting from the mm. line of scrimmage to chase Brock Wright down and tackle him at the one which set up the fumble and Dallas recovers. And it was just an incredible play. And it's why he's the one of the early favorites to win defensive player of the year. And that might be, might be the play that gets him, gets him bumps him into the favorite right now. I think it was just. Yeah. Well, you're, I didn't ask for your opinion, but good thing. I had the best opinions. That is fiction. Very fiction. We 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 said Minnesota was going to be undefeated going into the Penn State game, and that didn't work out. So yeah, no, that that went sour quick. And uh, it looks like I know I'm a little bit behind on this, but it looks like Bailey Zappi is taking. Yeah, over he Matt went Jones. right down the field. Yep, right down the field. So what did 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 did, did Mac re hurt that ankle, or Bill was sick of this and needed to jump? Oh, he was awful. Offense. It was they just had, terrible. They had gotcha. I think they had like one one or two first downs. But not bad, even honestly. I think that's a touchdown, though. Yeah, he's up. Yeah, that's a touchdown. Yeah, they he yep. think goes down again. No, it extends. Yeah, you know, it's a touchdown, hundred percent. So, yep. back to the Cowboys. This this defense, just let your defense win it. Don't do anything stupid. Just let them play complimentary football. Run the ball. Keep that defense fresh, and you're going to win a lot of games. I would like I, with the trade deadline coming up. I wouldn't mind them trying to make a move for a, a receiver. I don't know which ones are going to be available. I know possibly Chase Claypool, who I am not a fan of, and I do not. Why would you want him. that? Exactly He's what so overrated. Exactly why I said I don't want him. His name was just brought up. Has been brought up in trade talks, or Jerry Judy, who could. But... Why would Why would Denver get move off him? They're they're reportedly shopping him because, well, I mean, neither quarterback, whether it's Rippon or Russell Wilson, can get him the ball. Nathaniel Hackett can't hack it, and Hackett's going to get fired. I think he will. He might actually. There was talks that if they don't beat, depending on if they don't look somewhat decent in London, they might fire him. Talk about they have no ownership since they hired him. No one's hired him. Yeah, but hey. You know, and let's like, like Ethan just said, let's not forget. Ethan was ahead of this two weeks ago when he said these owners in Denver did not hire him. Yep. And they're embarrassed about the product they're putting on the field. Could you, you, you guys, could you imagine this? We get upset if we spend $55 and we play a horseshit round of golf. Could you imagine if you spend what $4 billion to buy a football team? And this is the product you have on the field. And you trade, you trade your entire draft class. Your entire and you pay, and two hundred pay your quarterback two hundred and fifty million for that. They're shit. They're just a suck. Yeah. yeah, I'd be I'd be embarrassed too. And this guy's going off making horrible commercials 
about different ways to eat a sandwich, buying the most expensive house in Colorado. You can't even talk to him unless you go to his manager. It's like, but let's not forget, let's ride. It, th- true. He stopped right saying off, that. He had his last right interview. He wanted end. to say it. He couldn't say. It. He didn't yeah, say. Yeah, right it. off, right off the end of the cliff. <laughs> well, well, well. The Broncos country, country let's ride. Let's hey. not completely dismiss it because it has given us some fantastic memes. I, you know, I, I, I thought Denver would fall apart in December because that's what Russ does. Because remember, he's too good to sleep. No time to sleep. I, I only sleep three and a half hours a night. But the fact that they're kind of almost falling off before November is just delicious. This, you guys do not understand how fantastic this is. Yeah, we, we know. Oh, yeah, we, we know we you're. Your package. It's great. This is true. What, what was that? I, I, what was that? I didn't, I didn't hear that either. I do understand how you feel. Look at how bad the Packers are. This is phenomenal. It's how, how fantastic is that? I mean, it's, it's insane. just, and you know what? Let's call a spade a spade here. Rogers sucks. Brady's falling in hard times, and Russell Wilson is down. It's kind of fantastic, actually. You know, I'm going to gonna say it. I am putting a fork officially in the Packers for the 2022 season. Oh, oh, oh we got a guarantee. There it is. There <laughs> guarantee. it is. Sorry, boys. Sharpie. All right. Okay. Not, oh, the Sharpie prediction? Let's go. Yes, we're going full <laughs> Seth Davis. Sharpie. Well, because I'm going to jump on that real quick. You know how big this weekend is in the NFL for the Packers? Because the Vikings have the Cardinals. Okay. At I'll home, they, at, at, home, home. at 11 o'clock. That is Kirk I, Cousins' prime time. And I'll be there. Hypothetically, and the Vikings have never lost with you at U.S. Bank Stadium, correct? Correct. So yeah. let's, let's play this hypothetical game here, boys. The Vikings do their thing. They come off the bye. They beat that ass. And the Cardinals have to travel two time zones and kick off at noon, our time. That's in the words of Shannon Sharp. We're serving up hot elves. Green and Bay. Is it, time, Hank, is, is it daylight savings time week this week? I think that's next week. Is, okay. It's I can't remember. Yeah. I could never remember, but I know it's always around this time. I think it's always the first Saturday in November or some okay. shit. Okay. And um, uh, right. so that would be like, that would, if, if it was a week be- week later, then it would be the, it would, it would be three time zones. Correct. They're, they don't change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Arizona doesn't change. And then, but then, so what does Green Bay have to do? They have to go on the road to against Buffalo. the team who just had their bye, and they're, they, they're the best team in football against Buffalo. If they lose that game, they're three and five. The Vikings are six and one. Oh, boy. Like yeah. this, this weekend is huge. Mm-hmm. And exactly. it's, I, I can't wait for it. Exactly. But back back to the Cowboys. Those Judy Claypool were the two. There was talks of DJ Moore being being available, but according to the Panthers, that is not true. Him and Brian Burns are both not available. I guess there's a report that Burns was they some team offered the Panthers two first round draft picks and they said no. I see that good. Well, including his sack on Sunday through three plus seasons, this is his fourth year. He's had thirty sacks. That's um, not bad. So you know that that's not bad. You know, you know, pass rush is a premium at this league, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't have it, you can't. If you don't have it, you can't. You can't win. And it's it takes these defensive linemen, you know, a year to a year and a half to really develop and find their find their groove in this league. You know, Michael Parsons is an, is an alien. He's different. Yeah. Most pass rushers are, are not like him, so why not spend a first round pick or two on a guy where you come in and you know you're going to get at least eight to ten sacks a year? Why not? And and especially if 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 you're trading for him, you're expecting to be drafting in the late late twenties, L- early thirties of the first round. Anyway, exactly. So it's not like it's really going to be that big of a deal. Correct. And it, it's to win a Super Bowl. You're you're an elite, elite in an elite category forever. It doesn't matter if you just win one. You you could you basically never have to buy a drink in that town if you win a Super Bowl. And the list goes on and on of things that you can that you don't have to do if you win, win a city a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, Doug Peterson and Nick Foles have statues outside of Lincoln Financial Field. 
Yeah. And, and you know, and, Doug, and Doug Peterson got a standing ovation when the Jaguars came back to Philly. I'm I mean, crap. I'm not that sure. I'm not that sure. The guy wrote a book about leadership. He's got a book. He's, He's got, got a book. book. <laughs> that's, that's when you know you've, you've made it is when you can say you've written a book. Well, when someone wrote it for you and they put your name on the cover, that's when you know you've made it. That's when you're an elite member of society is when you, when you can write a book in air quotes. Yeah, exactly. And I guess, but the receivers, I wouldn't, I would like to see him trade. I don't know who it would be for, but they, I do think they're still missing a number one receiver. Like they've, they had with an Amari Cooper. Bring Amari back. Just bring him, bring back. him back. Maybe. Bring him back. Well, that's not the worst idea. No, I, I don't think, I don't, it's not the worst idea. It's not going to happen, but, but we can move over Chiefs 44, 49ers 23. These, this Chiefs team is reminding me of the late 2000s, early 2010 Packers with when Aaron Rodgers was in his prime where it didn't matter the down and distance. It didn't matter the situation. It just felt like no matter what situation, what situation these, this chiefs team is in, if they're down three scores, if they're, if it's third and 20, they're going to, they're going to find a way to come back and win, or they're going to convert on a third and 20, no matter what happens. There's just, they just find ways to do it. This is looking like a team that is going – they are on a mission. They, they aren't – this might be the first time Patrick Mahomes has to go on the road in a playoff game. It doesn't look like it, they really care because they're going to find a way to convert a third and 20. They can get down by however much. They find ways to come back because they're so explosive. And I made, I made a bet with my boss that if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, I have to get cornrows. And I don't want to get cornrows. <laughs> and it's looking like I'm going to have to. Like, they're, they're, every, like the Chiefs, I think the NFL is just going to lay down for the Chiefs the rest of the year, and Chiefs are going to freeze through it. They're going to win the rest of their games 49-17, to 17, and it's not going to be close. And I'm going to be going up on a podcast in February with cornrows. That, that's exactly how this season is going to play out now. Is this you know, Zappy what? guy the second coming of Tom Brady? Well, he, he might be. He might be. Taking over for an injured uh, starter. Come, come I, I mean, seriously, you know, the dude just had an absolute dart down the left sideline for 40 yards after a turnover. Dude, the guy I threw for 62 touchdowns last year at Western Kentucky. Like, he's freaking good. But, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't having to see Dylan get cornrows just, be, like, make your year almost, Ethan? Knowing how yeah, much that would he, make me happy. Knowing It'd how be... much he would hate that. And not the fact yeah, that he'd have to cornrows. come to Minneapolis and see how that goes. It'd be fun. But then the fact that he would have to sit back and let his boss know that, hey, you were right and I was wrong. We all know how, mu how much Dylan loves telling people he was wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh it was scored. Well, because most would... of the time they are wrong. And, well, they, I, and no, the, I other, the other part, too, is, is like, well, I, just, 